All right, we're going to talk to you about feedback from Wimbledon, make some predictions for the U.S. Open, and talk to you about what it takes to be a tennis coach because it's the summer, and a lot of people will be coaching, and it's very there are things you have to worry about when you coach. Um, first of all, uh, on Wimbledon, uh, congratulations, to Annie Murray, and uh, and I think this sets a tone for the U.S. Open, the Australian Open, the French is winning the Dolls Kingdom for a long, long time, but. U.S. Open, I, I visualize Murray and Djokovic again because I, I, I think Roger's pretty done. I don't think Roger can, can handle that many matches in a row. So to win the U.S. Open, he needs seven. And if, if Murray, Murray's extremely physically fit, he's very physical, great defense, plays with spin. Djokovic is extremely fit, great defense, plays a little harder, a little more flat. So with two of them, all things being equal, if Murray's having... Murray, will, his level of play will all be pretty high. Djokovic, because he hits flat, will always be prone to ups and downs. And I actually think he had a flat moment then, because he wasn't finishing. And normally when Djokovic plays really well, he steps in, he takes a backhand on the rise, nails it down the line and finishes, or he takes a forehand on the rise, nails it down the line and finishes. Because he hits flat, he's able to put the ball away. He's just a little bit off in that final. And if he's a little bit off, Murray has the advantage, because he plays a little bit more spin. So in the U.S. Open, I actually think Murray's going to win again. At the Australian Open, the court's a little bit more bouncy than the U.S. Open. I think Murray has a hard time finishing it at the Australian Open because it's so bouncy. And that gives Djokovic a chance to get to the ball. I think Djokovic runs Murray more. So if the court is a little bit more bouncy, that favors Murray, I think. Because I think all things being equal, they both have great fitness. Um, Murray plays great defense. Uh, I think he's more defensive than Djokovic. I think Djokovic is a little bit more aggressive. My gut feeling is he wins the US Open, but he loses the Australian. Uh, for tennis pros out there, teaching tennis pros now, you'll think about this. This is from my man, uh, Keith, out in Canada. Teaching tennis is like playing a match. If you're on court for like six hours in a day, you need to treat it like you're being on a tennis court for six hours a day. The first rule is be covered because your skin is very vulnerable. When your skin is exposed to sunlight, you absorb a lot of heat. And then when you get home at night, you'll feel the heat coming off your body. When you put clothing on and you cover your head with like a hat, covering your head with a hat and having something covering your neck, the back of your neck and your ears, makes a big difference. It, it increases your tolerance on the court. Like when I'm covered with a big hat and shades and long sleeve shirts and pants, not pants, but like long pants, like knee, knee length shorts, right? Your typical baggy shorts. I can be on court for a good six hours. You put an umbrella over me, I, not, I don't even feel it. If I sit a lot, I, I'll totally not feel it. And that's going to be the key. You treat being on court like you're playing a match. Hydrate, drink, eat bananas, do Gatorade. You, you should be hydrating every 15 minutes. And to be fair, when you're teaching little kids, you need to hydrate like every 10. As the kids get a little older, you should hydrate every 15. But every 15 is, is like a standard rule. Max 20. Never let your kids train longer than 20 while, while drinking water. And to be fair, you play a tennis match. The longest game you serve is going to be like 6 minutes. The longest game your point will serve is 6 minutes. So every 15 minutes you're getting water anyway in the tennis match. So it makes no sense to train and not give your kids a break to get water. And while they're getting water, you should be getting water. Well, another thing that helped us when we have extreme conditions was we had a spritzer. We had like this uh, little sprinkler for water for kids. Because little kids are really bad about sun awareness. They don't do sunscreen. They're not wearing shades. They're not wearing hats. They're not wearing long sleeve shirts. You know? They're just coming out like in normal clothes, like t-shirt and shorts, which is okay. But you're not protecting yourself, you're not protecting yourself against the sun. And I think as a coach teaching your kids, you need to show them sun protection. Plus, there's like some built-in liability too, right? Like, well, some kids have like skin cancer from like being in the sun and sues your butt, you know? If you tell them about sunscreen and you tell your employees about sunscreen, your pros under you, then they have no basis. Now, after the match is done, you should have your lunch, you, you eat food and snacks, like, like a tennis match. What really helped me, I would just soak in cold water in the shower and I'll turn the air on when I got home and I'll let my skin breathe, like no shirt, let your skin breathe and I'll just sit in the air conditioning in the dark and I'll just sleep. Because what's going to happen is you're going to feel about the fifth week, 
you would feel terrible. You start feeling terrible. The day, the day just saps your energy. We're not designed to be the sun, you know. And if the conditions are really hot and sunny, you gotta be aware of that. So, Keith, good luck to you in your new profession and coaching tennis and everything. Um, treat it like a match. Bananas, light lunches, pasta at night. You know, treat it like you're playing tennis. Um, hydrate, cover your skin as much as possible. Get an umbrella, dude. You have no an umbrella makes a world of difference. And when you get an umbrella, you need a big cloth umbrella. Don't get those umbrellas where the sun can go through it. Because what happens is the sun goes through the umbrella, like a canvas umbrella, and it heats up the air inside the umbrella. And, and it just stays there trapped. And so you're extremely hot. You get one of those big umbrellas that are canvas, like you see at the beaches or by uh, tables. That way you can, you can put the umbrella on your wagon, and that way you're under the shade as you feed. And the only problem is you can't feed love when you have the umbrella. But an umbrella on a ball, like a ball hopper, huge difference. You can be out there all day. Um, best of luck to everyone. Congratulations to Murray again. And this has been Hawaii Tennis Pro speaking to you on his new website, simpletennis.net. Hoping to garner any questions that you have.